And we are monitoring breaking news out of the Middle East where there are reports of more collapsed buildings in Turkey and Syria after yet another earthquake rocked the uh, border from Turkey and Syria. Scary stuff. Just heartbreaking, Bridget. And the magnitude 6.3 earthquake struck in the same province where thousands were killed after the series of tremors that struck just two weeks ago. Now, officials are already reporting injuries as well as fatalities with that number expected to climb as we learn more. So for the very latest on this a kind of changing, quickly evolving situation, let's bring in now San Diego State University geologist Pat Abbott. Dr. Abbott, thank you so much for joining us on Fox Weather. What's the very latest that you're hearing about this earthquake? Well, what we're seeing, of course, is an, is an aftershock, a continued movement, and it's a very large one. A 6.3 is a huge, damaging earthquake all by itself. But following fundamentally twin earthquakes, a 7.8 and a 7.5, that means there's a whole lot of buildings there, tens of thousands of them, that have cracks that have been compromised by the earlier earthquakes but haven't fallen yet that will be prone to fall with this 6.3. So I'm afraid the death count, although not getting into thousands, I'm afraid it's going to be an unacceptably large number when it's digging through the latest rubble. Right. It's hard to think about some of the compounding effects due to two weeks ago with the major earthquake striking the similar region. So uh, with this, you kind of touched on it, but does this come as a surprise following the series of quakes just two weeks ago? Can this be considered an aftershock of what we saw a couple weeks ago? Well, well, this is not a surprise to us. In other words, it's very expected. The surprise to us is we never know the when. We cannot predict, but we can tell you what is coming. Now, when you have earthquake of a magnitude seven, think about that. That means the ground ripped and moved horizontally about 23 feet. And all that time, the earth is tearing. It's sending out earthquake shock waves, seismic waves that are doing all that destruction. Now, a 6.3, let me put it again by feet. That's a rip in the earth maybe as much as eight feet long. So eight feet compared to 23 is smaller, but if you just look at the 6.3 by itself, this is still a major event. If they hadn't even had the 7.8s, you would have had some people die from the 6.3 in those areas, primarily because they do not build buildings properly. Mm -hmm. Just astronomical damage as well. And so, Dr. Abbott, we know that still early in details about this quake, they are still limited. But how exactly does this impact cleanup and recovery efforts from the last earthquake, especially when weather conditions haven't been very favorable for that last round of recovery efforts? Well, the, the ongoing cleanup will, of course, keep going. But, you know, they've had loads and loads of building inspectors going through. They build there for the, primarily with concrete columns and concrete beams. Not enough steel, not enough lime that to make even strong cement. So a lot of buildings that they've gone through and noted that had cracks but would be moderate damage, a lot of those now are going to have failed time. You know, the good news is, if, if I could even say that, is you notice in the pictures of a collapsed pancake building like we're looking at, then there's other ones nearby that stand and don't have a problem. In other words, some people follow the construction codes, use proper materials, and they still exist. And what you're seeing here are those who, who cheated, frankly, who, who didn't follow the rules and who, who did it wrong. Hard to see all of these images across Syria as well as Turkey. San Diego State University geologist Pat Abbott, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.